at 18, you yeah. had the world at your feet. And your gesture of, you know, that, that when you did this with your wi eyes <laughs> wide open and your hands like this, for a long, long time, that became the defining, almost a global uh, uh, representation of Indian beauty. For a long, long time, that picture was there. Yeah. So you've traveled a long way after that. So a beauty queen, a model, an actor, a mother, a poet. You're all of these. But what really defines you? Oh. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for being here. Members of the press, my ma, thank you for being here, Alma. There are lots of things I do, as we all do, um, and none of it defines me. Uh, the only thing that I can safely say defines me is something as simple as I am. That's it. My being present in every moment, in every decision, in every belief, in every action in my life. The person who does all these things, whether they are creative expressions, emotional ones, financial ones, um, the person behind those things, that's how I identify myself. Complicated, no? <laughs> <laughs> See, everybody thinks, I mean, the general impression is that if you're beautiful, you may not be intelligent. You did it blonde, dumb, the general impression. Even in 2018, really? No, that, no I'm going no. to ask you, do you think that did you ever had to mm. convince people that there was actually uh, a brain, a <laughs> I mean, an, an intelligent person behind the beautiful face. For one, I have never apologized for being beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, given that I, I came into the limelight at 18, and by 24 I was a single mom, the decisions I had made in my life were loud and clear. Um, that you had to take me very seriously. Uh, it wasn't because of the beauty or the mind behind it, but the fact that here was an individual who definitely had a mind of her own. God knows, you should ask my mom and dad. They dealt with it 18 years prior to you getting to know me. And they encouraged it. They always made it a point to ask my opinion about everything. So I think the question then would be, I might have had to convince people after a point that I was actually also beautiful. Ah, <laughs> the mind, I think, they already knew I had. Yeah. Why, are, why do you all clap so like, dar dar ke? Huh? Yeah, a big like, hand. Yeah. <laughs> it's just celebrate everything today. It's so <laughs> lovely being here. You talked about your mom and that your parents let you be and they asked you, uh, and let you participate in all decisions and everything. So how is your relationship with your daughters? I mean, are you a helicopter mom? Uh, do you like that? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, trying to keep a check on everything that they're doing and you know, breathing down their neck <laughs> or basically letting them be and also letting them decide things and you know, one of the things you learn as a parent is um, every child is different. So every child should be different, has a different um, understanding of themselves, of the world around them. And if you want to raise an individual to be unique and different, then yeah, you've got to pay attention a lot to how you bring them up so that they don't clone into each other and just grow up as their only identity being my daughter or each other's sister or just send girls. Yeah. I want them, so I'm not a helicopter mom, whatever that means, but uh, I definitely am very involved in their lives, um, but only up to a point, only till I think I need to safeguard them or protect them given that they are born into a very public uh, domain with an identity way before they even came into existence. So I want them to value that. 
I want them to recognize the responsibility that comes with it. Um, both my daughters represent hope to a lot of children. And I'm, I am very aware of that. So I try and inculcate those habits. Sometimes I succeed. Sometimes, like every other parent, I fail. Then I try again. But yes, I'm very much involved in their lives. What are the values you would like them to grow up with? Oh, integrity, by far. A very deep sense uh, of honesty to themselves and their lives and who they are. And the ability to know that every action has consequences, to have the strength to withstand it and to stand their ground. It's not easy. Yeah. Patience, to have lots of that. I think a lot of young ladies uh, tend to make a lot of irreversible mistakes in their lives because of impatience. It's the one quality I definitely hope to get both my girls to learn. Did you ever make any mistakes because of impatience? Have you? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you learn from your own mistakes, and then you pass it along. But I'm a good student. I learn quickly. Yeah. Um, you seem to be having a lot of fun with them, because going by your posts on social media, I mean, you dance with them a lot. You work out with them, and <laughs> generally doing lots of things. Yeah. And your younger one seems to be very good with maths and everything. Oh, she, she is. So she's the only one in the Sen family who's good in maths. Um, and she's really, really good at it. She's got a knack for it, so we work with that. Yes, I, I do have... Uh, I wanted to be a young mother because I wanted to go diving and paragliding and jump off cliffs and do all this fun stuff with my children. Uh, and I do do them. And it's good because Elisa came 10 years after Renee. So Alisa goes, you paraglided with her. Why aren't we doing bungee jumping? <laughs> so I go, well, you know, I was 24, now I'm 42. Not a good enough reason. If you're going to be a single parent, you've got to do it all over again and do it right. So they're keeping me young. It's fun. So do they know that they have been, so to say, an unconventional mother and they've had a... I mean, they kind of know. My elder one definitely does, uh, Renee, because she's 19 now. And the younger one is nine, who's going on 80. She's very emotionally evolved as a person. So they kind of know, but according to their age, um, I must tell you about Elisa. This is her honest approach to life. Why do they take your picture? She asks me. So I said, because, you know, I'm kind of famous and, you know, I'm also an actor. And No, you're not an actor. You don't do movies. So I'm thinking to myself, I gave up films eight years ago because I wanted to be a part of my daughter's life. I didn't want to miss out on anything. And she gets up there at age nine and says, why do they fuss about you so much? You don't even do these things. And it's a good reminder. So I told her, you wait, turn 10, and you see Mama's going to be gone all the time. And I think she's looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, so she's kind of helping me come back to films. Do you, Just have, do you have any plans? Very much so. Very much so. Because uh, <coughs> that's, that's what I was going to ask you. BV or BV? Okay, I'm here. BV number one, please. No BV so, or so BV. Sorry, There's so only sorry. one BV in that one. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So sorry. <laughs> okay, and so was it a conscious decision to leave at that time? You were on a roll, and people, I think, wanted to see more of you at that point. I'm sure Did they you? want to see. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I think that's been that's been a good space for me, by God's grace, because you see, I entered the film industry at a time when, by the time you were 27 years old, your career was over, as an actor, actress, not as an actor, as an actress. That has changed. We live in great times uh, for the Indian film industry now, where content is king, where there are different kinds of cinemas being made, different age group uh, actors are required to play those parts. Um, I left at a time when I took a call between this and that, what is more important to me? And I figured I can come back and shoot a film again but these most important years of Elisa's life, they will not come back. And I wanted to experience it big time because I missed it for Renee. 
uh, and I was busy working, uh, and I really missed out on that. So I didn't want to do that with Elisa. Thank God I didn't. Uh, now when I come back, I've been joking that I'm the new Stallone. So if the industry will not give me the script I want, I'm going to write myself one. Wonderful. Wonderful. And that's exactly what we're doing. I have a very dear friend of mine and a very talented writer called Mudassar Aziz, who's writing the film for my comeback. Uh, we also have OK the Script, uh, where I play a cop. God help me. Uh, oh. And so it's an action film. Yeah, coming back with a bang and how. Oh, wonderful. So that explains, that explains your rigorous workout routines. No, 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 no. That has a different reason. OK. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't hurt, because it kind of works together. I knew this at a very young age, that वक्त को जब आना होगा वो आता जाएगा, कभी बुरा वक्त का आएगा, कभी अच्छा वक्त आएगा. But you got to always be ready for the good times. You got to be ready for the right opportunity, and that means mentally, physically, emotionally, rock solid ready. So with no work, which was a conscious decision, um, the kind of work that didn't inspire me to get out and do that and stay away from other things that I do in my life, which is a lot. I said, let's start getting ready. Let's start training to be the best version of myself. And given that I was going backwards from my 40s, yes. that's supposed to be funny anyway, <laughs> I <laughs> decided that I'm going to make sure that the strength I've always felt inside of me is made visible. And so I worked towards it with a lot of different ailments that I was suffering at that time. I've got a very bad back. Oh. So I said, let's hang like a bat. Let's see how that works out. Oh, wonderful. A lot of doctors have yeah. given up, by the way. If you've seen her videos, I mean, I can't imagine that she had a bad back ever. Yeah. And yeah. That's mm -hmm. crazy. Have yeah. you seen my videos? It's quite so quiet. Yeah, this is so good. Yeah. You guys are all on Instagram. Extremely inspirational ones. Oh, you are. That's lovely. <laughs> it's great to be on that platform and share your life with people. It's lovely. True. So, you know, many film industry observers believe that many top heroes were uncomfortable mm. working with you because they were shorter than you, most of them. So, <laughs> well, to be honest, if that bothered them, then it isn't about their height that we should worry about. It is the size of their egos. Yeah, so that's what I, exactly. so that's what I was going to ask you. Yeah. So more than that, do you think it's difficult for not just the heroes or generally for men still to accept a strong, uh, independent woman or they're still intimidated by her? You have to ask me the question because I've, it doesn't matter to me what they think. Oh, lovely. If it, there is an intimidation factor, or if there is an uh, element of not accepting a strong or independent thinking woman, then the problem definitely lies with that individual, with that mindset. I refuse to accept it. That's all I know. Yeah. So now that you're going to come back to movies, uh, I mean, where Bollywood has had a reputation of being patriarchal, misogynistic, that it's given a raw deal to women. And do you th what are your views on the gender gap and the uh, pay gap, which now everybody's talking about, that women, and women actors are not paid as much as the... M but to be honest, that's the case everywhere, isn't it? In every sector. Um, interestingly, someone had read to me the fact that in our constitution, we have a provision for it. In, uh, don't catch me for this, but it is between the article of 37 and 51, I think. Articles 37 and 51, somewhere there, article 39 to be precise, I think, you do have that provision. But it's not enforceable by law. So, yeah, if the law of your country does not enforce it, then the mindset will take longer to change. It kind of works in tandem with each other. Uh, does it exist? Of course it does. Um, it, uh, I would have said that in 1994, 95, 96 when I joined the film industry. It still exists. And uh, I think, again, that is changing considerably. 
Today, what a Deepika or any of your first five names in the industry is earning is astonishing going back to 96. It's incredible. It's, that is empowering women, by all means. But if you're going to compare it to on a gender bias, oh yeah, you're miles to go before you can be paid the same wage for the same job. But it's a mindset thing. It can't change with just one element. I yeah, don't And think. it's not just in India. It's, it's all everywhere. The world. It's everywhere. You know, interestingly, I just want to add this. Uh, here we are talking about inequality and sexism and gender biases. And a lot of our women from the agricultural background sector have not seen or had any level of education except practical skill labor at times, that's it. And yet we want them to fight for something that they don't yet understand is their right. Uh, they're not educated enough to understand that they have a place in the world that matters. And then you look at America and globally, they are educated women and it took them that much time so after education, there has to be a coming together and a lot of courage. So unless we first educate them, we're, we're miles behind to finding that voice and courage to, well, find equality of any kind. So it has to be everyone pitching in anything they can, anything, literally, and just making it a collective voice rather than a campaign. So it starts from education, basically. The I level. agree, completely. And unsavory element of the showbiz now is the Me Too campaign, which happened. And interestingly, I mean, there's been a major uproar in uh, Hollywood, but not as much in Bollywood. But do we have any Weinsteins here? Of course there must be. I mean, by all means, any industry that's going to have power is going to misuse that power if it is not kept under check. And I don't think in, in our industry you really need to have Weinsteins. You've got much smaller players that are a bigger nightmare than Weinstein to a lot of people who have no way of being heard. A lot of women who've probably been subjected to it. Uh, I have to say though, in the last so many years, I find that women have found a way to say no. This I'm very proud of because I come from an industry where they would not talk about it. But now I hear them say no. That's a good use of social media. I hear a lot of no. And people live under that bit of fear that now they, it, it, it just can't go unnoticed anymore. Somebody's voice will be heard. And that's really it. You're living in times where you don't have to give a woman a voice. You have to listen to her. And as long as you're listening, you have a way of helping. So I, I do strongly believe that even women, as I was saying uh, abroad uh, in Hollywood, with as much of international presence in education and fighting for basic human rights that they do, took them that much time to come together and fight for a Me Too campaign. For us, it will take a lot more. It will take a lot of men supporting us. It will take a lot of the true meaning of feminism. It has no gender biases even for the people who stand for it. So yeah, I am very blessed. I have to tell you, I have met a lot of men who celebrate women as equals. Uh, and God bless you. Because of you, I'm one of those women who've grown up to believe that yin and yang matter, that it isn't one without the other. They both are a team, and that's how you change things, when you play as a team. So yeah, men, help. Help in every way possible. Don't empower us, just support us. Yeah. <laughs> I think <coughs> that is what's required, because recently, just two days ago, another former beauty queen, yeah. she raised this issue uh, against, a, against an actor and everybody started defending the actor and <coughs> basically they tried to attack the credibility of the woman. Yeah. So, so Tanushri, uh, God bless her, it takes a lot of courage to come out and tell your truth. 
I wasn't there, you weren't there, we don't know what happened. But one thing's for sure, everything has two sides to a story. But when one side is told, let us not dismiss it till we found out. Uh, and that is all she's asking for, and I hope she gets it. You recently took a teenage boy to task who misbehaved with you. Um, when such incidents can happen to a celebrity like you, can we even imagine what happens to like women who go out to work every day, who are out there <coughs> vulnerable? No, I, I, I never had a misconception about that. I grew up in Delhi. This yeah. is where my home was for a good 14, 15 years. I'm from Vasant Kunj. Yes. And at a time when Vasant Kunj only had us living there, <laughs> like there was nothing else. So the road that used to come from Vasant Continental, my father has stood there with his yellow Bajaj scooter to take me back and forth, back and forth, because he was not OK with leaving me there um, alone. The times that we're living in, um, the way that we see the world around us, it's very important to know that it's, I'm dying to tell them, Ma. Yeah. Tell, tell, now no, see. No, she's no. saying yes, I'm right. Oh, OK, then you have but to. Going back to your question about the dad thing specifically, because I went into her story. Yeah. So uh, have you, I mean, do you think that the times have changed since then, since your? Don't tell them, OK? I won't tell. OK. Ma says no. Of course, times have changed. A lot. There's a lot of improvement. There are tracking. You know, today, technology allows you very many different ways to help and aid a situation. Um, we can monitor people we love, where they were. You can go and use transport that should be safe. Uh, you have police on speed dial, and the police actually pick up the phone these days. So there has been a huge lot of help in that direction, but it can still be better, given that we know of all the very tormenting stories and disgraceful ones. Little children stories. It is repulsive to one's soul to believe that this was, there was a time we used to say, this does not happen in my country. But it does, we just didn't know about it. And now that we do, there are great laws being made do you think that's going to be a deterrent? I mean, they're against child rapists. Yes. Now they have even allowed death penalty now. Excellent. Yeah, so you think, they, do they work? Do they actually work as a deterrent? No, so there are two sides to it, I believe. Deterrent is one aspect. But there has to be something that you fear. It can't be about nobody will find out, it doesn't matter. But there are two sides to it. If you raise a child, telling this child, Jhoot bolna paap hai, jhoot bolna paap hai, jhoot mat bolo, don't lie. But you allow him no consequence if he lies. He's not going to value it. He's not going to understand that there is a consequence attached to that. So yes, how you raise a child with what beliefs and what conditioning is one aspect. Without that, just giving them a sudden punishment isn't going to change a lot. But that punishment is going to be something that at least people that have sick heads and minds can be made an example of. Oh, I'm for the death penalty, for sure, when it comes to rapists of not just children. Because when you rape a woman, you take away everything from her. Her life is over. You deserve to die. I have no moral grounds to say that a man like that or men like that should be allowed to live. You were talking about educating girls and women. So I think in this respect, we also have to educate boys. Right from the beginning, it's our responsibility as mothers, how we raise our boys. And, and as fathers. Yes. Fathers and mothers. Because sons have a way of wanting to discuss a few things only with their dads. That's where it's important for the father to not just say things, but be that example. Because you can tell your children all you want, 
they will only be led by example. What they watch, what they listen to, it's a cumulative effect. And yeah, there are great examples of that. So both men and women, teamwork, got to raise their children and tell them that you disrespect a woman, same as disrespecting ma. Not just in theory, but in action. I think it's a mindset again. It's the conditioning. When you change that, and it's not going to happen overnight, we understand that. But it will happen, like Ma'am said very beautifully in her speech. Maybe in the time of her daughter's generation. And pass on the baton to her granddaughter's generation. But you got to try. You got to try. Smita, what is your idea of women empowerment? We keep talking about women empowerment. Mm -hmm. What, according to you, it actually means? <laughs> tough one. And how, yeah. I mean, education we've already talked about, so because that goes in the yeah, long yeah, way. Yeah, very important. So other than ed education. What would empower you, ladies? Very simply, just say it out loud. Freedom to be. Do you need someone else to give you that? Excellent. What else do you need from someone else? I am. Excellent. I'll come back to that. What else do you want for empowerment? Equality. Excellent. Anything else? Respect. Big one. Very big one. And I'll ask Lieutenant Commander Vartika Joshi. What does there she is. Hi. Space, so. Space. Oh, wonderful. To express yourself, to find yourself. Excellent. Yes, sir. Men are allowed to also speak, sir. You were saying something? No, no, no. <laughs> OK. Very well said. That's it. One of the key things to remember is, given that women are at different stages of evolution in their own lives. We are not clones of each other. Everyone needs a different thing at a different time to be empowered. And that's why empowerment cannot be logistically one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. It's everything. It's everything. Respect, ma'am, is a big one for me. And the one thing I learned early in life, because I have been around people who listened and who corrected me, who guided me from the age of 18, more so globally, they always said that as a woman, try to not demand anything. Get so good that you can command it. And the first thing you got to do with that, educate yourself. Understand your place, not just in your state and in your country, but how you can influence the world at large, that your voice matters. Make sure it can be heard. And then, respect is commanded. It's not demanded anymore. So yeah, I've spent an entire 18, 42 minus 18. <laughs> Told you I'm no good in math. Anybody? 42 minus 18. Really? I feel so at home. 24, thank you. So I've spent 24 years trying to live that, trying to get women to say, let me not tell you, Esa karne se, you will feel empowered. You know your vajuts, your, your need, at what stage of that life or your conditioning you're at. Sometimes all a woman wants, really, ki mujh se koi panch minute, meri baat sun le. Bus. That's empowering. So let's just give women the space to do that. And the respect, uh, the ability to earn that respect. We don't want it just because we are women. We just want the ability, the space, the freedom to earn that respect. Last question now. Bus! <laughs> 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 <laughs>
you achieve fame and success at a very early age. Yes. And, and you took decisions which many people like, okay, for example, adoption. At 24, at, I mean, if you see the youngsters, they're probably kids themselves. Mm -hmm. And you went and you fought to, uh, went to the court and you fought to uh, adopt. And even your, I remember your last question in the Miss Universe thing, you talked about being a mother and being caring and sharing about being a woman. So, um, what exactly has your journey been like uh, from, was it very tough initially when you started out um, at 18? Did you make any mistakes? Did you regret anything? So many things she's asked me and I've forgotten the question only. <laughs> okay, and any, reg <laughs> any regrets? Let's put it no, simply. No, 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 I, I have to be honest with you. Um, that's, that's, that's a good question. Yeah. You know, I can speak for myself and the life I lead, I don't like carrying baggages. It's a conscious choice every day of my life to say, oh, I messed that up big time. And this is my takeaway from it. This is what I learned. Maybe I need to apologize. Maybe I should not even apologize for this because it's that bad. Like just say sorry to yourself and move on. Oh, I've made a lot of mistakes. And God knows I will make them. But I make new ones each time. <laughs> I'm good at that. And uh, I forgive myself and I let the situation go and I change my choices. But I don't carry regrets. To me, that is the only reason I still feel inspired by life with its possibilities. I'm not tainted. I don't have a sense of, how do you say that word in good English? Um, huh? Help? You know, when, what, what is that word, my, in English? She's, I'm good. Regret? No, no, no. No, when you get tainted, you get... You should help. You have a negative perception of every situation. Huh? Jaded is excellent, but that's not the word. Low self-esteem? Cynical. You <laughs> go, girl. That's the word, cynical. Thank you also, Mom. Well tried. Yeah, I'm not cynical. Yeah, that's the word. See? Um, and I'm very blessed that I have a lot of love from people who have allowed me my space to explore who I am. In coming back to that I am, it's really not about I do, I will, I was. It's just being in this moment and giving it everything you've got. And then tomorrow's another day. We'll see about that but mm. I am. Wonderful, wonderful. It's a privilege. Thank you so much.